Today on Running to Him. We as believers are to toil, persevere, and repent of our sins when we recognize them. Today's reading from the reading plan is Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, concentrating on verses 1 through 5. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 5 says, To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, The one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands, says this, I know your deeds and your toil and your perseverance, that you cannot tolerate evil men, and you put to the test those who call themselves apostles, and they are not. And you found these to be false. And you have perseverance and have endured for my name's sake and have not grown weary. But I have this against you. You have left your first love, and therefore remember where you have fallen, and repent and do the deeds you did at the first, or else I am coming to you and will remove your lampstand out of its place, unless you repent. Now Christ's first message is to the church at Ephesus. The church was one in which Paul had a long-term ministry and encouraged them to live righteously and fight evil with God's full power. John had a ministry there as well and had been exiled to Patmos from Ephesus. Christ begins his message to the Ephesians by reflecting on their deeds as believers. They had worked for Christ. They had toiled. Now the word toil gives us a picture of the weariness one sometimes experiences in his or her work for Christ. There are times we are driven by our passion for Christ's work, but exhausted through that work. As an aside, this exhaustion is exactly why God mandated a day of rest in the Old Testament, a time of refreshment and relaxation. The word perseverance translates from a Greek word meaning to remain even through trials and strife. Perseverance in the Christian walk is shown when trials and strife appears, we do not cower, but rather face them with boldness. Now, one of the most significant examples of this is Polycarp's refusal to be nailed to the stake, but only to be bound to it as he burned. He promised the proconsul he would remain still while he was burned to death. The flames could not consume him, so they stabbed him with a dagger. He died with Christ on his lips. The Ephesians did not tolerate evil men. This attribute is needed today in the Christian world. We are taught that we are to be tolerant people, But that's partially false. To tolerate something means that we put up with it. We don't like it, but we do it anyway. Christians are not to tolerate evil in their church community. Evil will surround us outside the church, and we accept that as a fact. But when evil comes into the church or a believer's practice, we must be willing to address it boldly and with the same attitude as God. Now, there is something wrong with the Ephesian church. They lost their first love. How can people who are performing all the things for which they were praised lose their first love? You can lose your passion for Christ when your desire for pleasure overcomes your desire for worship. Now, I have no idea what activity it was that the Ephesians were doing, but some of our churches today have lost the power of worship and replaced it with the power of worshiptainment. These churches bring many into their doors through appealing to the senses and entertainment rather than the work of worship. They have replaced spiritual disciplines with emotional fluff. Today's church has much to its credit, as the Ephesians church had much to their credit. But when you lose your first love, you risk as a church its destruction. Christ is not telling the Ephesian church that each member will lose their salvation if they don't repent. He is telling them that the church's community would be destroyed because of their lack of repentance. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at PhineasJacobus at runningtohim.net.